The next day, Ethan strode into the combat training arena with newfound confidence. As the class gathered, he felt the weight of expectant stares. The instructor, a grizzled Iridian veteran, barked out orders. Pair up! Let's see what you've learned! Ethan found himself facing a towering Iridian student. The alien sneered, clearly expecting an easy victory. But as soon as the match began, Ethan's body moved with startling speed and precision. He ducked under a wild swing and countered with a lightning-fast jab to his opponent's midsection. The Iridian stumbled back, gasping. Whispers rippled through the watching students. Ethan pressed his advantage, his movements fluid and powerful. Within moments, his opponent was flat on his back, tapping out in surrender. The instructor's eyes narrowed. Baker, over here. You're up against Kraz next. Kraz was one of the top fighters in the class. He circled Ethan warily, then launched into a flurry of strikes. But Ethan's enhanced reflexes allowed him to block and dodge with ease. He countered with a series of quick blows that left Kraz reeling. As Ethan dispatched opponent after opponent, the mood in the arena shifted. Grudging respect replaced mockery in the eyes of his classmates. All except Fornax, who glowered from the sidelines, fists clenched in barely contained rage. After class, Ethan was gathering his gear when a hesitant voice spoke up behind him. Hey, uh, Ethan, that was impressive. Ethan turned to see an Iridian student shuffling nervously. I'm Zyphon. Look, I wanted to say I'm sorry for not standing up to Fornax before. The way you fought today, maybe we were wrong about humans. Ethan smiled cautiously. Thanks, Zyphon. No hard feelings. As the days passed, Ethan's combat prowess became the talk of the academy. In the cafeteria, he overheard snippets of conversation. Did you see the human in combat class? He took down Vex like it was nothing. There's no way that's natural. He must be cheating somehow. I heard the faculty is investigating him for performance enhancers. Ethan kept his head down, trying to ignore the speculation, but he couldn't escape Fornax's growing hatred. One evening, as Ethan was changing after a shower, Fornax and his gang burst into the locker room. Time to put you in your place, monkey, Fornax snarled. They charged at Ethan, fists flying, but Ethan's augmented reflexes kicked in. He ducked and weaved, landing precise counter-strikes. One of Fornax's cronies went down hard, clutching his stomach. Another caught an elbow to the face and crumpled. Fornax, eyes blazing with fury, bull-rushed Ethan. But the human was ready. He sidestepped, using Fornax's momentum to slam him into the lockers. The Iridian bully slumped to the floor, dazed and bloodied. Word of the fight spread like wildfire. Ethan found himself the center of attention, with some students now openly friendly. But others eyed him with suspicion and fear. New posters appeared in the halls, courtesy of the Purity League. Humans, a threat to Iridian supremacy, they proclaimed, alongside images of Ethan's victories. The summons to the headmaster's office came as no surprise. The elder Iridian's face was grave as Ethan entered. Mr. Baker, I've heard disturbing reports about a fight in the locker room. Care to explain? Ethan swallowed hard. Sir, I was just defending myself. Fornax and his friends attacked me. The headmaster's piercing gaze bored into him. I see. And your sudden prowess in combat training? I've been working hard, sir, trying to catch up to Iridian standards. After a long pause, the headmaster nodded. Very well. But consider this a warning, Mr. Baker. We're watching you closely. As Ethan left, he didn't see the headmaster activate a secure comm channel to the Galactic Council. Despite the tension... Ethan found himself making more friends. Zyphon approached him after class one day, excitement in his voice. Ethan, we need a new rider for our hover cycle racing team. With your reflexes, you'd be perfect. Want to join? Ethan grinned, genuinely touched. That sounds awesome, Zyphon. I'd love to. But that night, as Ethan lay in bed, doubts gnawed at him. How long could he keep pushing his enhancements before someone caught on? And what would happen when they did? Sleep was a long time coming. Sleep eluded Ethan that night, but his worries were forgotten when a message pinged on his communicator the next morning. 
He blinked in surprise as he read the official Academy letterhead. Cadet Baker, report to Hangar 7 at 0800 hours for Nova Squadron orientation. Ethan's heart raced as he hustled to the massive hangar. A group of Iridian students in sleek flight suits stood at attention before a row of gleaming starfighters. An imposing officer paced before them. Cadets, meet your new squad mate, the officer barked. Baker, fall in line. Ethan scrambled to join the formation, acutely aware of the curious glances from the other recruits. The officer launched into a speech about Nova Squadron's elite status and rigorous training regimen. Ethan soaked it all in, hardly believing his luck. After orientation, a lanky Iridian cadet approached Ethan. I'm Zex. That was some impressive flying in the Sims last week. Maybe you humans aren't so primitive after all. Ethan grinned, about to respond. When a commotion erupted outside the hangar, he turned to see Fornax storming towards him, face contorted with rage. You don't belong here, ape, Fornax snarled. I'll make sure everyone knows what you really are. Before Ethan could react, Fornax spun on his heel and marched away. An uneasy feeling settled in Ethan's gut. That night, Ethan jolted awake to the sound of his door crashing open. Blinding lights flooded the room as armored security forces swarmed in. Cadet Baker, you're under arrest, a modulated voice boomed. Do not resist! Ethan's mind reeled as he was roughly hauled from bed. He watched helplessly as the officers tore apart his room, unearthing the hidden compartment in his suitcase. One held up the classified EDF package triumphantly. Illegal augmentation tech, just as reported, the officer said. Take him to the brig. Hours later, Ethan stood before a stern disciplinary panel. The Iridian Chancellor glared down at him with barely concealed disdain. Cadet Baker, you stand accused of possessing illegal augmentation technology, the Chancellor intoned. How do you plead? Ethan's mind raced. He couldn't reveal the classified EDF program, but he needed to explain somehow. Sir, I can explain. These aren't illegal augmentations, they're... Specialized training aids, approved by Earth's government. The Chancellor's eyes narrowed. A likely story. We've tolerated your presence here as a gesture of goodwill, but this deception proves humans have no place at our academy. You are hereby expelled, effective immediately. Ethan's shoulders slumped as the full weight of his failure crashed down on him. As he trudged back to his room to pack, Ziphon and several other cadets intercepted him. Ethan, wait, Ziphon called. You can't just leave. The Academy needs you. Appeal the decision. Ethan shook his head. It's over, Ziphon. I failed. No, Ziphon insisted. Take it to the Galactic Council. Make them listen. Ethan hesitated, then nodded slowly. He had nothing left to lose. Days later, Ethan stood before the assembled Galactic Council, broadcast feeds transmitting his image across the galaxy. He took a deep breath and revealed the truth about the EDF's enhancement program. The council chamber erupted into chaos. Some representatives praised humanity's ingenuity, while others denounced the augmentations as unnatural. On dozens of worlds, protesters took to the streets, waving signs decrying human barbarism. After hours of heated debate, the council reached a compromise. Ethan could return to the Academy and Nova Squadron, but under strict monitoring. As he left the chamber, Ethan felt a mix of relief and apprehension. He'd won the right to stay, but at what cost? Back at the academy, Ethan endured suspicious glares from his fellow cadets. Trust, so hard won, had evaporated overnight. In the mess hall, he overheard Fornax holding court. See? I told you humans couldn't be trusted, Fornax sneered. Mark my words, letting that ape stay will be the doom of us all. Ethan hunched his shoulders and ate alone, wondering if he'd made the right choice in fighting to stay. The path ahead looked lonelier than ever. Ever before. The next few weeks were a roller coaster for Ethan. Some students, like Ziphon, stuck by him fiercely. Others whispered behind his back or shot him dirty looks in the halls. Fornax's hate group grew, their angry voices echoing through the academy. One day in advanced piloting, Instructor Kraz announced a simulator exercise. Two teams, Baker, Ziphon, your Alpha. Fornax, 
You lead Beta. Let's see what you've got. Ethan's heart raced as he climbed into the simulator pod. The familiar hum of the engines filled his ears as the virtual star field materialized around him. Alpha Leader, you're clear, Ziphon's voice crackled over the comm. I've got your six. Ethan's fingers flew over the controls, his enhanced reflexes allowing him to process information at lightning speed. He barrel-rolled to avoid enemy fire, then snap-turned to catch Fornax's wingman in a perfect kill shot. Nice one, Ethan, Ziphon cheered. As the dogfight raged on, Ethan's team systematically dismantled Fornax's squad. When the simulation ended, Fornax stormed out of his pod, face purple with rage. He cheated, Fornax snarled, jabbing a finger at Ethan. There's no way a human could fly like that. Instructor Kraz silenced him with a glare. That's enough, cadet. Baker's team won fair and square. That night, Ethan tossed and turned in his bunk, unable to shake a feeling of unease. A loud crash jolted him awake. Alarms blared through the academy as panicked voices filled the halls. Ethan raced to the simulator bay, his blood running cold at the sight that greeted him. Smoke poured from the main computer core. Inside the pods, his classmates thrashed wildly, trapped in malfunctioning simulations spinning out of control. Without hesitation, Ethan dove into action. He pried open an access panel, fingers flying as he interfaced directly with the system. His augmentations kicked into overdrive, allowing him to process the flood of data. Come on, come on, Ethan muttered, overriding fail-safes and rerouting power. Slowly, agonizingly, the pods stabilized. As the last cadet stumbled free, Ethan sagged against the wall in exhaustion. A cheer went up from the gathered crowd. Even some who'd shunned him before clapped him on the back. But the victory was short-lived. Within hours, the Iridian Purity League claimed responsibility for the attack. This is only the beginning, their manifesto raged. We will purge the human taint from our society. The next days brought chaos. Riots erupted across Cyphus Prime. The Galactic Council, furious at the Iridians' failure to contain the extremists, dispatched peacekeepers to the Academy. Among them were human special forces, a stark reminder of the growing interstellar tensions. Ethan watched it all unfold with a sinking heart. He'd come here to bridge the gap between their species, not widen it. There had to be a way to fix this. An idea struck him as he lay awake one night. It was risky maybe even crazy, but it just might work. The next morning, Ethan marched into the headmaster's office. Sir, I have a proposal. He laid out his plan for an exchange program, top human and Iridian cadets training side by side in an elite unit. If they could learn to work together, to trust each other, it could be the first step towards real peace. The headmaster stroked his chin thoughtfully. It's certainly audacious but perhaps audacity is what we need right now. Word spread quickly. The human and Iridian governments cautiously agreed to a trial run. Ethan and Ziphon were tapped to lead the initiative. As Ethan addressed the first group of exchange cadets, he felt the weight of history on his shoulders. This had to work. The future of both their species might depend on it. But across campus, Fornax and his Purity League allies were already plotting. They would not let humans corrupt their beloved academy. By any means necessary, they would see this program, and Ethan Baker, fail. The stage was set for a clash that would shape the fate of two civilizations. Ethan only hoped he was ready for what lay ahead. The integrated training program launched with a tense atmosphere. Ethan stood at attention alongside his fellow human cadets, acutely aware of the cold stares from their Iridian counterparts. The drill instructor barked orders, his voice echoing across the parade ground. All right, maggots, human Iridian pairs now. Ethan found himself face to face with a towering Iridian cadet. The alien's four eyes narrowed as he looked down at Ethan. Try to keep up, ape, the Iridian muttered. Ethan bit back a retort, focusing on the obstacle course ahead. As they ran, jumped, and crawled through the punishing terrain, Insults flew between the mixed teams. Move it, you oversized lizard. Careful, primate. Don't want to break a nail. The hostility simmered, threatening to boil over at any moment. 
Ethan caught Zyphon's eye across the field, sharing a worried glance. Days passed, with little improvement in cooperation. Then came the live fire exercise. Ethan crouched behind cover, pulse rifle at the ready. Sweat beaded on his forehead as he scanned the rocky terrain for targets. A distant buzz caught his attention. Ethan's enhanced senses kicked in, slowing his perception of time. He spotted sleek black shapes darting through the air. Definitely not part of the exercise. Havoc drones, Ethan shouted. Everyone down! Chaos erupted as the drones opened fire, peppering the ground with energy bolts. Ethan's augmentation surged into overdrive. He leapt from cover, tackling a human cadet out of the line of fire. Ethan! Zyphon's voice cut through the din. Over here! Ethan sprinted toward his friend, dodging blaster fire. He slid behind a rock outcropping where Zyphon had taken shelter with two other humans. What's happening? Zyphon asked, eyes wide. Fornax, Ethan growled. Has to be. A scream pierced the air as an Iridian cadet fell, clutching a smoking wound. Ethan's lips pursed as he saw more rogue Iridians emerging from cover, weapons trained on the humans. We have to help them, Ethan said, gesturing to the pinned-down human cadets. Zyphon nodded grimly. I'm with you. They burst from cover, Ethan laying down, suppressing fire, while Zyphon dragged wounded humans to safety. The battle raged on, with casualties mounting on both sides. Suddenly, Ethan's calm crackled to life. A familiar, sneering voice filled the airwaves. Attention, human scum! Fornax's voice boomed. I have your precious ally. The video feed showed Zyphon, bound and bloody, with Fornax holding a blade to his throat. Surrender now, Fornax continued, or watch this race traitor die. Ethan's blood ran cold as he surveyed the battlefield. Human forces were outnumbered and outgunned. He knew what he had to do, but the cost. His hand shook as he reached for the small, innocuous-looking canister on his belt. The bioweapon, a last resort he never thought he'd use. I'm sorry, Zyphon, Ethan whispered. He activated the weapon. A colorless gas hissed out, spreading rapidly across the compound. Iridian soldiers began to drop, choking and convulsing. Ethan raced toward Fornax's position, praying he wasn't too late. He found Zyphon on the ground, gasping for air. It and Zyphon wheezed. What did you do? Ethan cradled his friend's head, tears streaming down his face. I had to, Zyphon. I'm so sorry. Zyphon's eyes filled with pain and betrayal. You monsters. He choked out before going limp. All around, Iridian civilians fled in terror. Alarms blared as the situation spiraled out of control. Ethan barely registered the Earth's special forces that surrounded him, urging him to evacuate. As the dropship lifted off, Ethan stared numbly at the chaos below. He had saved his people, but at what cost? The hope for peace between their species lay shattered just like Zyphon's broken body on the ground. The officer beside him spoke quietly. You did what you had to do, son. Ethan said nothing, his eyes fixed on the rapidly shrinking academy grounds. He knew that this was only the beginning. The flames of war, so long held at bay, now roared to life, and he had lit the match. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.